Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the spindle on your Shapeoko and build a cabinet for all the electronics. You'll start out by unwiring the motors from the motor shield just by opening these terminals. Then separate the shield from the Arduino. Break off a section of three header pins and then a single header pin to use. There's some good documentation online that'll tell you exactly where these need to be inserted. I used this third hand to hold it in place upside down while I soldered it from the underside. You can see the single pin there that sticks out, and then you add the three pins on the other side. Do the same thing, just solder it in and be sure to use really fine solder so you get a nice clean joint. Then just put the shield and the Arduino back together. So 24 volts are going to come into the Arduino, into the shield. These jumpers are going to connect it to the relay. The relay is going to connect to the spindle and the speed controller. The speed controller connects to the power source. Use three jumpers to connect the Arduino to the relay. Be sure to switch the power supply to 115 volts if you're in the US. And then you wire up the plug, just like you wire up any other plug. Then you're going to take power out of the positive and negative terminals and this is going to run to your system. This is going to go into the speed controller, and then the speed controller is going to be connected to the relay and the spindle. When you go to connect the spindle, you want to use a long set of wires so that once it's on the machine, it has plenty of slack so that it can move around with the gantry on the machine. Solder the ends together to the spindle and then cover up the joint with some heat shrink tubing. Once this is wired up, you're really done with the upgrade. The system works and it's ready to add to your machine. You can see here that the potentiometer now controls the speed of the spindle. Then it's just a matter of mounting the spindle in your machine just like you did when you set it up the first time. I decided that I didn't want all these new electronics just floating around next to the machine, so I decided to build a little cabinet to put underneath the machine itself to hold all the electronics. Building this cabinet is basically the same process I used when I made my king size bed and you can check that video out right here for more specifics. It's really simple and pretty rough because I was just kind of making it up as I went along, but I cut some plywood down into the strips for the full size that I wanted of the cabinet and then one piece to use on the inside as a divider. I drew some lines so I knew where to shoot the nails and then used glue and brad nails to connect them. I flipped the frame over and added some glue and then laid on a piece of 8 inch plywood and nailed it down. To nail in the front side of the divider, I just measured over the same distance that I used on the back and shot nails down it. Then it was ready to put in the electronics and I had plenty of space in the section and I just kind of laid things out where they fit with the wires, weren't too stretched or anything. And then drilled some holes in the back so that I could feed through the power wires for both the power supply and for the Arduino. I wanted a way for all the components to be held in place but not permanently attached, so I just glued on some scrap blocks of wood around each component as I laid it in place. That way I can lift them out of these pieces, but they won't slide around if I bump the cabinet. I added these blocks for the speed controller and for the Arduino. Made sure the Arduino was set up against where I wanted the front of it to be, and then marked where the USB and the power ports were so that I could make an opening for them. I cut these sections out on the bandsaw really quickly and did a pretty bad job of it, but this is kind of a utilitarian thing and it's not going to be very pretty anyway. I counterbored the back of this panel and then drilled out the center where the speed control knob could feed through. Reattached it on the other side and then put on the knob. Held the piece in place and just nailed it with a couple of nails. That way you can knock it out with a hammer if I need to, since it's not glued in. Since I was just making this up as I went along, I didn't account for any kind of ventilation for the power supplies, and I realized it was probably going to get pretty hot in there. So I used this multi-tool to cut out a section of the back panel. Then I cut down some pegboard that I had to a nice little scrap that would fit in that opening I made and nailed it in place. It's not a lot of ventilation, but it's better than nothing. I also had to drill a hole so that I could feed through the motor wires and attach them to the Arduino. I marked a half an inch back, since the plywood was a half an inch, and added some drawer slides using a piece of eighth inch ply as a spacer off the bottom. That way the drawer wouldn't scrape along the bottom of the cabinet as it came in and out. 
Then I made a really simple drawer to put in. I just used some scrap plywood that I had, cut it down to length, and then ripped those pieces down to a shorter height than the opening of the cabinet was. It didn't need to be a full height drawer. I glued and nailed this up the same way as I did everything else, and then glued and nailed the plywood onto the bottom. The drawer slides I used on this are a little different than the, what I used for the bed. These actually attach to the bottom of the drawer and then it slides in. The ones I used before were full extension drawers and they had to go to the side. After putting it in place and pushing it all the way back, I cut a piece of plywood that would fit the opening, held it in place with some glue, and then shot it on with a couple nails. I didn't want a boring old knob, so I went and stole one of my kids' dinosaurs and cut it in half. mixed up some epoxy and then just filled the dinosaur so that it was a solid piece of plastic. This is a technique I've seen on Pinterest a lot. People make coat hangers or knobs or all sorts of things like this so it's something you can carry over into other projects. After that dried it was completely solid so then it was a matter of just finding the center of the door, drilling a hole, and running a screw from the backside right into the epoxy. I mean that's a pretty awesome knob. The last step was just to cover the top with the 8th inch ply. I made sure to countersink the screws here so that when you put the CNC machine on the top of it, it doesn't end up uneven or anything because of a screw head. Now there's a drawer for all the bits and all that stuff. Now here's a test between the old spindle and the new spindle. In that clip, it's not quite as obvious as it is actually being here how much of a difference there is between the two spindles. This quiet spindle is a lot quieter and it doesn't have the really high pitch whine that the other one does. I think it's going to cut a lot better. I haven't gotten to cut anything with it yet, but I think it's going to be a pretty big improvement and it's not really very much work to do the upgrade. Now as far as the enclosure, you could do it a lot of different ways. I just didn't want to waste any more space by building something that would go next to it or behind it or anything like that. And I made it up kind of as I went along, so if I were to do it again, I would probably do some stuff differently and make the area for the electronics a little bit smaller and do some other stuff. In fact, it'd be kind of cool to replace this front panel with a piece of plexiglass, then you could see all the electronics and any lights that were on or off on the inside. Now the drawer is really just for organization. It's to keep the bits and all the stuff that goes with the CNC in there and out of the way so I don't lose them. Now if you don't have a Shapeoko, I understand that this may not be very helpful to you, but hopefully you learn something about making a cabinet with a drawer or at least making a dinosaur handle. But either way, I hope you found this helpful or at least interesting and if you did let me know in the comments down below or you can go to I like to make stuff.com and leave me a comment there and find a lot more projects if you like these videos and you want to help me do more of them and do them better there's a lot of ways you can support me right down here I've also got a lot more project videos a podcast with David Picciuto and Jimmy DeResta that's called making it and a live show called brain pick where you get to ask questions to online makers and get answers right away you can find me on all the social media networks and all the content lives at I like to make stuff.com thanks for watching guys See you next time.